Hello, friends and family. Welcome to Come Sit at My Table. I'm Tom. My wife, Melissa, is behind the camera today. And we are going to make corn pudding. Now, I will tell you that I have a ton of corn pudding recipes. But I only use one. When I found this recipe, I stopped using all the others. I got this recipe out of our local newspaper in a section that we had years ago about local cooks and they featured a different cook each week. And this recipe was given to the newspaper by a lady that we know who used to be a teacher. Her name is Lucille Harden. She's a retired teacher now. It is one of the best corn pudding recipes we have ever eaten. We absolutely love it. Let me show you what you need to make this corn pudding recipe. You're going to need corn, of course. Now this is our own home canned or home frozen corn. Uh, Melissa and I put corn in the freezer every year, every summer and fall. And so this is some that we had in our freezer, but you do not have to have that. You can just use canned corn. If you do that, you're going to need one pint, which is two cups of corn. Now this is a little more than two cups, but that's okay. I'm going to use it all today because I don't want to have some of it left over and it not be used and maybe go to waste. So I am using it all, but for the recipe, you're going to need two cups of corn, which is one pint. I would really suggest if you're going to use canned corn that you use shoe peg corn. It's a very small white kerneled corn that is very tender and very sweet. But again, that's not necessary. All you have to do is get two cups of corn. You're also going to need one egg, and we will beat that slightly just to kind of beat it up before we add it. You're going to need two tablespoons of melted butter. You're going to need one and one fourth cups of heavy whipping cream. Don't use regular milk. This heavy whipping cream is what makes this corn pudding so delicious. You're going to need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. You're going to need one-third cup of sugar, just regular white sugar, and one-fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Now, we're going to mix all that up, and then we will put it in a greased 8 by 8 or 9 by 9 baking dish. Make sure you spray it well just so it comes out. Corn pudding with the heavy cream and the sugar does like to stick around the edges a little bit. So make sure you spray it well or you grease it well with some butter before you start. Now, before we start to mix everything up, you want to preheat your oven. You need to set it on 400 degrees. I'll go ahead and tell you while I'm thinking about it. Even though you're going to bake it for 45 minutes, you're only going to want to set your oven in 15-minute increments. You want to bake it 15 minutes, open the oven, and stir it from around the edges. Close the oven door, bake it 15 more minutes, open the oven door, stir it from around the edges because the edges tend to bake a lot faster than the middle. So you're going to stir it again at the 30-minute mark, your second 15 minutes. And then you'll bake it for a final 15 minutes, and after that, it should be ready. All right, let's put our corn pudding together. We will start with our corn, of course, and we're just going to dump that in our bowl. This corn that we put up, was the variety called Temptations. It's kind of a yellow and white mix, um, a bi like a bicolor corn. And man, is it good. We love Temptations. Then we're going to beat up our eggs slightly. And we're just going to pour that in. And of course, if you know me, you know I'm going to scrape out every drop that I can get out of there. I don't like to waste anything. Then we'll add our melted butter. Just 
Pour that in and scrape your bowl. You don't want to lose any of it. Put those in the sink as we go so it's easier to clean up later. And we need one and one quarter cups of heavy whipping cream. There's one and a quarter cups. And we're just going to pour that in. And I want every single drop of that out of there. I'm telling you, the heavy whipping cream, along with the sugar, is what makes this so good. Um, Melissa and I were going to a church dinner years ago not long after I found this recipe in the newspaper. And we were supposed to take a couple dishes and I said, let's just make that corn pudding and take. Well, let me tell you, they scraped the dish. I mean, they absolutely <laughs> devoured it. And it wasn't long after that, we had someone in our church who passed away and we always offer to provide a dinner for the family. That was our flour, by the way, and here goes our sugar. And so they called and asked if we could do a dish for the funeral dinner. And we said, of course, and immediately the lady said, could you bring that corn pudding? All right, just a quarter teaspoon of salt. Not much salt at all. And of course, I did take the corn pudding and that kind of started something because now every time we have a church funeral dinner, they ask us to bring corn pudding. And as crazy as it sounds, we've even had people call us after a funeral dinner and say, you know, my aunt Susie died and they told me you made the corn pudding. Could we have that recipe? So it really is a good recipe. All right, so we have everything in, and now we're just going to pour it into our dish. We'll get every bit of that out of there. I guess we could name this funeral corn pudding, but that probably wouldn't be very good. Let's not call it that. No. We just had our church Christmas dinner last Sunday, and I took corn pudding. It just, it really is a good dish, and it travels well. Um, it's easy to take somewhere. Pardon this, but I'm gonna get this off here. Okay. All right, now, we're going to put it in the oven, but we're only going to put it in for 15 minutes. I'll take it out and stir it away from the edges, put it in for 15 more, stir it away from the edges, and put it in for a final 15 for a total of 45 minutes. So in we go. Now, after the first 15 minutes, it's not real done. It's just starting to cook around the edges, so I probably won't bring you back to see that. But after the 30 minute mark, my second set of 15 minutes, I'll probably come back and let you see how thick it's getting around the edges. And then we'll put it in for the final 15. So we'll be back soon. Our corn pudding baked for 15 minutes. I stirred it away from the edge of the pan and put it back in, set the timer for another 15 minutes. And that timer is about to go off. So now we're really at the 30 minute mark and this will be the last time we stir the corn pudding before it's finished. After I stir it this time, we'll put it back in the oven. Set the timer for 15 minutes one more time and then it should be ready. So let's stir it away from the edge of the pan. I want you to see how much it has baked. And you can see here at the edge of the pan, it is pretty thick. But in the middle, 
it's still really loose. And that's why we stir it. So we just want to stir it up. You can see that it has puffed up a little bit and it's thickened really well. So now we have stirred it good and I want to make sure I get it off the bottom too because you know the bottom has baked really well. So get it all stirred up, even it back out some and let's put it back in for one last 15 minute baking. All right, in 15 minutes, it should be finished and ready and we'll bring you back to see what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. We have just finished our 15 minutes of final baking time, which made a total of 45 minutes. So we can turn off the oven and take out our corn pudding. And look how pretty. Now, not only is this a very nice looking corn pudding, it's absolutely delicious. It's because of the heavy cream and the sugar that's in it, of course. Um, but it's just a really creamy, good corn pudding. I'm going to take some out. Now we're going to have this for dinner to this evening with some ranch pork chops but I am gonna take a spoon out and show you what it looks like. Do you wanna get in here so you can see what this is sure. like when I scoop it? I want you to look down in there at how creamy that is. It's not a dry corn pudding a at lot all. Sometimes corn pudding is, is a little dry. Yeah, but look at that. Look how nice that is. It's just really creamy. It's not runny, it's not loose but it's not dry. A lot of times you get corn pudding and I don't know, it's just dried out. And that's another thing, you don't wanna over bake this. If your oven bakes really hot and you can tell that it's starting to get a little dry, take it out. You don't have to leave it the whole time if you don't want to. Wow, this is hot. Can you see that steam? <laughs> I'm gonna burn my mouth. Oh, I know, I take too big of bites, I've been told that. I'll take a smaller bite. <laughs> you little prince is you. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I, I like big bites. Mm. It smells good. That is so good and creamy. Do you want a bite? I'll take a bite in a minute. Okay. Let it cool down just a little bit Ooh, for me. It is hot. I, just, I don't want to burn the roof of my mouth. Man, that is good. I'm telling you, I think if you'll try this corn pudding recipe, you'll never try another one. Like I said at the beginning, I've got a ton of corn pudding recipes. But once we made this one, we've never made any of the others again. This one's really good. I did mention that we make this for church dinners and when we have a funeral dinner, that kind of stuff. This one batch would not feed very many people at all. So when we do this for a church dinner, I always at least quadruple it. Sometimes I'll multiply it by five or six and do it in a large um, aluminum disposable pan and then you know, if they scrape it and take it all, they eat it all, then that pan just gets thrown away and I don't even have to bring it home with me. But this is enough to feed probably four to six people at least. But if you're going to take it to a big dinner, you might want to double it, triple it, quadruple it. I don't know. Um, if you double it, it fits perfectly in a nine by 13 pan. Even if you triple it, it'll go in a nine by 13 pan, but it'll be really full. So doubling or tripling, you can put it in a nine by 13. If you go bigger than that, you might wanna get a little bit larger uh, disposable pan or just a larger pan of some sort. All right, if you would, we would appreciate you going below this video 
on the left side and clicking the thumbs up that just says you liked our video. And if you have not already, we would appreciate you going below this video on the right and clicking the word subscribe and the little notification bell beside of it. And as always, we would appreciate if you'd share our videos. That just helps us reach more people. We certainly do appreciate that you watch our videos and we appreciate all the kind comments. I don't read them. <laughs> I read a lot of them too, you know. <laughs> Melissa does read them to me in the evenings and... You know, when she reads them, she tries to respond to most people. Um, I just, I, that's not my thing. But she does do that, and she does a great job with it. But she has read me most of the, the comments, and you've just been so kind and write such nice things, and we sure do appreciate that. All right, remember, you are always welcome to come sit at my table. Merry Christmas. Have a great day.